Hi, continuing on our discussion on 11AX and Wi-Fi 6, I want to talk about a point which probably doesn't get emphasized that often, which is uh, how much does OFDMA uh, help with respect to range and especially on the uplink. So this is the topic that I want to just focus on for a short presentation. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So how come OFDMA can help with respect to range? So if we take a station's transmission, typically, remember that before 11AX, the absolute minimum bandwidth which with the station could transmit was over 20 megahertz. So the power, let's say for example, this was like an IoT station which had let's say 0 dBm power, which corresponds to about 1 milliwatt. That power gets divided over this 20 megahertz, which is the absolute minimum bandwidth. Okay. Now, if you so happen to be, uh, you know, in a condition where your link is such that your noise floor, which is kind of the, you know, noise present over the entire bandwidth, that tends to be above this particular, you know, 1 milliwatt by 20 megahertz, whatever is the received equivalent of this then you will have very poor reception or basically the station cannot really send any uplink data. In fact, it causes problems even for downlink. Why? Because remember that downlink typically requires some uplink okay, for real life applications. So this actually spoils the show even if your traffic was predominantly downlink. How does OFDMA help with this? Now with OFDMA, we know that we can engage in 26 tone transmission. That's the smallest, which is approximately two megahertz bandwidth. So now this helps us primarily because we are able to boost our so-called power spectral density over the two megahertz simply by the fact that now our one milliwatt instead of being shared over 20 megahertz, gets shared over 2 megahertz. So that's a factor of 10 improvement. Okay, 10x power improvement or 10 dB also on the logarithmic scale. So this is the key point for the range potential with uplink OFDMA. Okay, remember it also helps in downlink traffic scenarios where you need to cover for some uplink actions. Now, if we want to also understand what about legacy preambles, etc., remember that legacy preambles do have some repetition. So we should be able to manage uh, with those things for those of you who might be interested in those details. Okay. And what is the proof that this can really give us some benefits? Let's see an example presented during the IEEE standardization phase. So here is a nice simulation exercise. Of course, a little bit you can say well organized. Stations at different distances from the access point, uh, uplink only uh, kind of traffic scenario, fixed tone allocation, total bandwidth of 80, lots of stations. Okay, this is what we would like to see for uh, you know the OFDMA case. Of course, we saw that stations are at different distances, and we assume that some a genie was helping us to choose the appropriate modulation and coding. Okay? We want to see whether OFDMA can really bring benefits in such a scenario. Remember, ideally OFDMA does benefit for these high density scenarios, but now we want to see whether the range impacts also kick in. So if here is the result which shows how legacy does compared to OFDMA. And what do we see here? There are benefits across the board when we use OFDMA as compared to legacy. However, the benefits are the best when I put all stations at the farthest range. Why is that? Because I am using OFDMA, remember that they are all going in those 26 tone transmissions in this OFDMA case. I am able to get the best gains compared to my non-OFDMA transmission. What about the case when we are all relatively close to the AP? Here I don't get so much benefit due to the range 
So indirectly also the range benefit here is what we call as good MCS here. Okay. So here I really am not able to get any great advantage of the uplink OFDMA phenomena. Whatever gains I get are the classical OFDMA benefits. Okay. So this is a simple uh, yes, it's a very well designed example, you might argue, but at least gives us a flavor of how OFTMA can give us benefits uh, when sort of range issues are involved. Okay. And of course, there are more results presented where stations are uh, everywhere around the AP. Uh, you can still see some gains, which is an average sort of gain across the board. Okay. But the main point was to pick out how OFTMA can help us in certain range scenarios, especially for uplink traffic. So I hope that was uh, useful. So for us more information, please take a look at our website. For all course information on Wi-Fi 6 and other topics, please visit Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you. Bye-bye.